This module has two parts to it. The first describes a minor evolution in the way OS agents operate. For the most part, the workings of the operating system agents have not changed. Agents are installed, configured, started, and operated more or less the same way. However, Broadcom introduced a new component, the Java OS agents, allowing for agents to be started by way of a Java command and a Java archive. Again, this is not a substitution, but rather an additional capability, so as to bring uniformity to the solution. The solution is the UCXJ OSS Java Archive, which is found in the bin directory of the agent, alongside the agent executable and the INI. We'll provide the command to start OS agents using Java. Finally, one of the major evolutions in the version 21 service packs and version 24 is the availability of the containerized agents. We're going to perform a complete demo of the deployments of the containerized agents, which works with both on-premise and containerized AEs. The Java OS agent stems from a need for a more unified and streamlined approach to agent management. You'll have noticed a trend in letting Java handle more and more agents. Over the past few releases, we've seen this happen with agents like SAP, PeopleSoft, and SQL. And so this decision is consistent with our way of doing things. With version 24, we've added the Windows and Linux agents. In future releases, others like AS400 and other flavors of Unix will move in that direction as well. The way we manage these agents has not changed. You can still rely on the old approach of running agents executables manually or through the service manager. The Java capability comes in addition to this. To start the agent, you simply position yourself in the agent's bin directory and invoke the Java archive through the Java commands. The archive is called UCXJ OSS. This produces exactly the same result as starting the agent with the executable. Finally, this method is supported with central agent upgrade and you'll be able to substitute the Java command to the executable and service manager. There are several benefits. First, these agents are going to be UTF compatible, which makes the process of agent management consistent with other new developments in atomic automation. It further provides the ability to send secure emails by the agents. We cover this in the V21 service pack modules. Java handling of agents means we can supervise the status of agents through the service manager, the legacy support of centralized agent upgrade has been not only extended to, but supplemented for Java OS. We have new parameters that can be appended to the agent start commands. So you would add these after executing the java-jar, ucxjoss.jar, either on the CLI or in the service manager. Dash dash console sends messages to the console. SVC port shows the status of the agent connection in the AE supervision tools when it's started via the service manager. Atomic Automation now offers support for containerized agents. This means agents can be deployed to their own pods in a cluster with or without Atomic Automation Kubernetes Edition. A containerized agent can connect to a conventional on-premise AE without any problems. This requires several components. First, a Docker image has to be deployed. For this, Broadcom provides the Docker file, which handles the initial acquisition of the agent installation package, untarring, agent process privileges assignments, and the creation of the trusted cert folder directory. Second, a script, run.sh, which sets the values of the agent's INI parameters and starts the agents. Each time a new agent pod is deployed, this script runs, sourcing information from the following configuration YAML elements. These contain the necessary configuration information for the new agent pod, and so we apply these post Docker. First, a config map, which stores the INI values, agent name, system name, and so forth. Second, a persistent volume to store the agent's private key. And third, a deployment file, which stores the deployment values of the agents. Note, we also have a secrets, which stores the TLI certificate authorizing the connection between the agent and AE. The Java-based agent can be used in a standalone container or in a Kubernetes cluster. Here we deploy into a cluster in a Google Cloud Platform and we'll connect it to the Atomic Automation Kubernetes Edition version 24 found in the same cluster. If the container images are built using Docker, then a Docker file script found in the agent install package can be used. Let's take a look at the Docker file. This is the Docker file. It's required to configure the base image used for the agent container image. 
We're using OpenJDK version 11. This is what the script does. It creates the Docker image and copies the agent install package to a specific folder, in our case, slash opt slash agent dash jos. It also unzips and untars. It further creates the trusted cert directory in which we'll store the TLS certificate authorizing the agent connection to AE by ways of a secret. Expect a similar process on Windows. Let's move on to the run.sh file. The run script executes each time we spin a new agent. It has three main parts. First, the agent INI file is configured with environment variables. We're going to show the config map in a second, but simply know that it's used to pass the following parameters. The agent name, the atomic system name, the connection value, which the agent uses to connect to AE, and the agent's private key passwords. In the second step, a local agent user is created. This user has a default password set. Finally, in the third step, the agent is created. Back in the Google Cloud Platform, we can go ahead and build the container images using Docker and the Docker file. The script executes. The run.sh file is copied for future use. The image is created. We can now tag the image. Finally, we push the image to the container registry on Google Cloud, which is accessible by the AAKE Kubernetes cluster. Let's take a look at the registry on the Google Cloud Platform. This is the registry. We hit F5 for a refresh. The new container image was built and tagged as requested. Let's look at the other things that need to happen to deploy an agent. We're back in the run.sh configuration file. Config parameters are passed using environment variables that are stored in a config map. Let's take a look at the .yaml file. The config map stores variables necessary to populate the INI file's values. We have the agents and the atomic system names. Logging is set to standard out because we don't use a persistent volume for logging, although we could. Note that we have a value for the trusted cert folder. However, this isn't relevant. This is the connection parameter value. In our case, the agent is running in the same cluster as atomic. And so we're using the JCP-WS value with a default 8443 ports. In the event the agent is running externally, meaning outside of the cluster, then you'll need an ingress or load balancer into the cluster so as to connect to the JCP. The password for the agent's private key is included. Next, we have a persistent volume to store the agent private key. This is needed for the agent to authenticate every time it connects. Without it, the key is lost and needs to be reset each time we restart the agents. This can also be used for the log files, but in our case, we're only using it for the private key. Finally, we have the deployment YAML file, which executes the deployment in the pod. One of the more important parameters is the location of the container image in the registry. This points to the config map that contains the name of the agents, the system name, and all other parameters we mentioned earlier. Again, we have to reiterate. Ignore the trusted cert folder value, it's not relevant. We mount the security folder where the private key is stored into the pod. The JCP certificate is sourced directly from the JCPWS cert secrets. This eliminates the need to manually copy it. It's automatically mounted using the secrets. At this point, we're ready to apply the three YAMLs. We can simply connect directly to the cluster using PowerShell. In the PowerShell window, we're already connected. We use kubectl apply. The order should be as follows. First, the config map, so parameters are set. You'll notice messages indicating no change because we've already applied those changes. You can just ignore them. Then we set the persistent volume. 
Finally, we apply the deployments. Back in the Google Cloud Platform, we refresh. We have a deployment called JOS-AAK. Let's take a look. The JOS-AAK pod is there and it's running. Again, we'll take a look at it. We can see the active pod which contains the running container. Let's check the logs. Ultimately, we have to be able to see the agent in AWI and use it. Let's take a look at that. We can see the agent in AWI. It's authenticated and active. Let's see if we can use it. We've defined a sample test job. Let's take a look at it. This is a basic job that issues a simple LS command. Let's show the attributes. We configure the agent and define a login object with the necessary information. This was configured in the run scripts. We execute and then take a look at the Google Cloud Platform to see the output there as well.